All right, let's do this. All right, today is date March 23rd, 2019, and this is how the frack we got here. I'm your host, Most Will Buchanan, on how the frack we got here. We do try to take uh, the week's events and also try to make sense out of it all because there's way too much fucked up shit going on in the world. So, before I get started, let you know that this is an adult podcast, which means adult language and things of graphic nature may be shown, so definitely viewer discretion is advised. For everybody else, welcome. So, we're just going to go ahead and jump right on into it. So, we're just going to go ahead and get to the meat, the heat of the matter. Um, um, I know there's about the Mueller report, but there's just one thing I wanted to point out, um, just starting off the bat, which I thought was interesting and amazing at the same time and unfortunately it came at the side of a tragedy now what i mean by side of a tragedy i mean new zealand um unfortunately in christchurch new zealand there was a terrorist attack um 50 uh, 50 people lost their lives uh just because some idiot didn't agree with their religion and also shot out donald trump at the same time but as as devastating as that tragedy is there was one thing of it which I was surprised how quickly New Zealand acted. Um, so I'll actually just show this clip. You guys will see where I'm coming from on that. Today I'm announcing that New Zealand will ban all military-style semi-automatic weapons. We will also ban all assault rifles. current owners of the weapons we have moved to ban, I acknowledge that many of you will have acted within the law. In recognition of that, and to incentivise their return, we will be establishing a buyback scheme. The details of this scheme are being developed in parallel to the drafting of the legislation to enforce the ban. Now, you do got to love that part. Now, well, the one part I want you to focus on the much is just that this was the second event. Because as I said in the first one, as you can see, 1997, there was a shooting. But because of last year, I mean, because of this most recent one that's barely two weeks old, you're sitting there and telling me that New Zealand has decided to come forward and say, you know what, we are going to adjust, we are going to adjust and ban assault style weapons. Amazingly enough, this took... One time, one time for all this to come together and one time for everybody to sit there and go, oh, no, things got to change on both sides. What different because of its because of its party system, both parties agreed that things needed to change. And it's amazing how they said things needed to change. But the simple fact of the matter is just like it took one event, one America, are you listening? Because I want to sit there and say, besides the 1,982 deaths that have actually occurred from gun violence, and that was just last year, excuse me, and that's just the, and that's just last year, one would think that, okay, we should be able to do the same thing. But of course, when you have companies out there like the NRA, and you actually have you know people out there that have money that can turn around and influence Congress to not write the laws, because I would say the best, and I'm, and I'm pointing out to somebody, I really did where I said about gun laws was we need to kind of be like Japan and in, in Japan since for all those that don't know Japan's gun laws are very fucking strict number one you can't have you can only have shotguns which means you can't have pistols you can't have assault rifles or anything else number two they interview your family and friends they give you a mental evaluation at a hospital by a certified doctor you have to go to a class and pass a proficiency test and you have to get recertified every year to own a handgun. Now, you would call that strict, but the actual shootings in Japan dropped over 67% once they instituted those laws. Now, do I think that we need to do the same thing here? In a sense, yes. 
we do need to reason we do need to have tire restrictions we do need to have universal background checks we do need to have mental health evaluations we do need to have uh classes and uh and certifications we do need all of those things now it's amazing how many people when you sit there and tell well you need to go through a mental health evaluation well i don't want to do that so we know you're not crazy you don't have access to a gun numb nuts that's why but it's amazing to me that new zealand off of one event would turn around and sit there and say, "Nope, we we need to change. We need to change the way this is going. This is this is not this is not working for us. This is this is we are not going to be submissive." Which is which I love that New Zealand Prime Minister was like, "We're not going to be like the rest of the world." And of course, that was the one time you never heard from Baby Huey on the other side twittering about New Zealand is doing. Oh, it's New Zealand. I don't care. You don't really see him doing that, and of course, you don't expect him to hear. You don't expect to hear from him as, as far as that goes. Except the simple fact of the matter where he's turning around and saying, "Well, well, our hearts and our thoughts go out to New Zealand," but you're going to knock John McCain, who's been dead for a while, because he didn't, you didn't, he didn't thank you for the funeral that you supposedly approved. You wanted a dead man to thank you, and that's just a, that's just how vain Donald Trump truly is. But move right along. Um, aside from that, because I know the, the main thing we're going to get to is where right now is where the political drama is, and it's pretty much with this one. The Justice Department is, uh, is telling us that uh, Attorney General Bill Barr has now received the report from uh, Special Counsel Robert Mueller. The investigation, 675 days old, is now over. So uh, obviously this is a big moment for this White House. This is something, this is an investigation that has hung over the presidency of Donald Trump uh, since the beginning, obviously. And so uh, now the, the question is, what is in that report? We expect that Bill Barr is going to be reviewing what Bob Mueller found in his investigation, and then we'll tell Congress Congress exactly what he can tell them. Uh, we expect that this is essentially going to be a Bill Barr report. It's something that's going to be uh, much less than what uh, Robert Mueller provided in his investigation. Now, let's, uh, let's step back a little bit uh, and talk about this investigation. This has been, uh, by all accounts, one of the most fruitful investigations. Uh, if you, if you uh, compare it to just an average Justice Department investigation, let's go through that. 37 uh, defendants, including six Trump associates who've been, who've been charged with crimes as a result of this investigation. We have five people who have been sentenced to prison so far, and 16 Trump associates at least have been shown to have uh, contacts with uh, Russia, uh, Russians uh, as a result during the, the campaign or during the transition. Again, this is what Robert Mueller was tasked with investigating as a result of, of the interference in the 2016 election. Uh, what uh, obviously now we have to, to, to turn the page to is the fact that this is not a normal investigation. Uh, the big question has been whether or not uh, there was an actual, uh, any evidence of collusion between people associated with the Trump campaign and Russians, whether the president was aware of any of that, whether uh, there was any conspiracy to, to throw essentially the 2016 election. Uh, so far, Robert Mueller has not charged that in any of the cases that have been uh, made public. So the question is, is there something uh, related to collusion in the report that Robert Mueller has now turned in to Bill Barr, the attorney general? Is there any uh, proof or evidence of obstruction of justice, any proof of crimes that he was not able to, to bring uh, charges on? That's the big question. And of course, Bill Barr is now going to review this report, Wolf, uh, before he reports to Congress on exactly what Robert Mueller found. So what's going to be interesting is whether or not we can sit there and say, yes, Robert Mueller is done. He is report has been turned in to the Department of Justice, along with the Attorney General, uh, William Barr, who was basically the new Attorney General after the last Attorney General quit because he was basically in collusion with Trump. And that was before the previous as before the previous Attorney General who had to quit because he was also uh, nominated by Trump and was found to be inadequate and was actually asked. Well, actually, take it back. Let, let, let's start off. Uh, <laughs> this this is how bad Trump's administration really is. If you got to think about it, the first the first Attorney General um, John uh, John Severance was literally asked by Trump to quit. He even said so in his resignation. Matthew Whitaker, who was supposed to take him, was supposed to take over him, who had no experience whatsoever, was only put in by Trump to stem the Mueller investigation. 
He then also stepped down, which then led to William Barr, which William Barr is now the man, the only man at this moment that actually has the actual uh, Mueller documentation. So at this point, he's going over it, and like I said in his preview, before his uh, confirmation, he was asked by he was asked by Democrats and Republicans alike, "Do you believe that this report can be made public?" And I'm sorry because here's the things that bother me. Um, the Watergate uh, the Watergate investigation was made public. Uh, Kenneth Starr investigation on whether Clinton got head whether or not the White House was public. So the one time where a lot of people just don't understand this where the idea of the actual Russia probe started and I've been saying this on previous podcasts and I'll say it again the initial instruction of, of Mr. Mueller was to investigate whether or not Russia was involved in the 2016 election that was it a lot of people kept getting that a lot of people kept getting that twisted as seeing as whether or not Robert Mueller is investigating the Trump administration the Trump administration over whether or not they were in the lot they use rush to be involved so a lot of you know news stations uh i.e fox news was actually doing so and saying well Mueller's just investigating trump no let's be true let's be clear about that Mueller is investigating the election and wherever it may lead now if it does lead to the trump administration being involved with the russians in order to win the election to influence and win the presidential election that's different but that's still within the scope of what he's looking at so initially from jump street robert Mueller hasn't been looking at trump however if the road does lead to him then he still fulfilled his obligation as far as the scope goes and a lot of people are saying you know as, as trump has been saying this entire time it's a witch hunt okay it's a witch hunt there's no collusion no collusion i didn't do anything but people are sitting there saying it's a witch hunt well let's go down the road what let's go down the row of everybody that was caught or oh, i should say everybody that's been indicted let's just start let's just start from the grand top i mean look at paul manafort the former trump manager campaign that's a dollar on 25 counts and two jurisdictions and is still facing and is still facing charges in new york he was convicted last year and so far he's and so far he's up to 24 uh to uh 48 months uh 48 months less than four years in prison but he still has to be sentenced on other crimes you can look at rick gates uh manafort's from both manafort's a right hand man ultimately faced 29 charges for perjury so again he was also and then uh then george papadopoulos george uh, papadopoulos everybody remember the intern about the coffee he also got he also was a uh, charged with making false statements to the fbi and michael flynn who can forget michael flynn I like to call him Compromise Flynn. You know, the guy who was the former National Security Advisor was charged making false statements to the FBI because he didn't want to admit that he met with Russian diplomats? That guy. And, of course, let's not forget, you know, uh, personal fixer turned snitch Michael Cohen because he turned around and also was charged making false statements to Congress. And he's also, so far, been sentenced to, sentenced to two years, pending other charges coming down the road because he's still being a... Uh, He's still pretty much testifying. And let's not forget Roger Stone, because Roger Stone is still walking around like a guy who should be an America's top model. Uh, the way he dresses, he actually dressed like a Bond villain, really. Is still under indictment. Principal fact of the matter is that he was actually in touch with Russian uh with Russians uh with Russian uh, conglomerates about the WikiLeaks issue. Still being still about to be charged. And of course, Richard Panino, which again was another guy that was that was actually sold the bank information of Americans to Russians and was caught also a part of the 2016 US elections currently serving a two month two months a two year sentence and of course there's one other person with nobody really heard of Alex van der Waan which actually is a Dutch lawyer who was actually the first dude that actually Mueller went after because um, ironically enough that he made false statements to the FBI, brought in false representation, and at the same time was working at a law firm in Ukraine along Paul Manafort and Richard Gates. You know, I used to sit there and say it a long time, follow the money. Follow the money. When in any case, in any crime or anything that's involving collusion or construction or anything obstruction of justice, first and foremost, every crime every every police crime drama always says the same. Follow the money. 
And look at that. And that's just, and the guys I just named off were the ones that were involved that Mueller had indicted and had been tried. And let's not forget, there's a whole bunch of Russian uh, Russian people that were not named, but they were named at one point. But now, because they're being deported, um, they're, uh, they decided not to, I guess, release their names for some odd reason. But keep in mind, in a two-year investigation, and I, do, and I say this again, in a two-year investigation, Mueller has found more people connected in some way to Trump that have all had the same type of charges. Making false statements, false representation, lying to the FBI, I mean, collusion with foreign diplomats, Russian diplomats. Again, follow the money. There's no other way I can put that except to follow the money. So again, it'll be interesting, and I say this so many times, it will be interesting to see the White House's reaction. Well, the White House reaction already so far, just to go ahead, that they were not briefed or or had received the Mueller report. Um, one thing I don't get, which it's I scratched my head when Sarah Sanders said that we haven't been briefed or received the Mueller report. Um, that's like saying you did a report on me that I'm going to give to you, so you can review yourself. And I understand that, so you can review yourself. Re why? Why would I even... See, th that's the thing that bothers me. Why do I even sit there and give something like that at the time of day when it says, I should review you? No. I mean, the whole idea of it all is to sit there and say, um, for lack of better words, this report is mostly about you and your administration. So you really shouldn't be surprised about whether or not it comes back to haunt you or the fact that I have to tell you about it so that way you feel better about yourself. That's the part that I just, I shook my head about. Because again, Sarah Sanders, um, I shouldn't really expect anything less from her, except the simple fact of the matter is just that the the, the level of dedication to, to, to stupidity just to remain valid, just to remain invalid is amazing. But moving right along, there was another story that I did want to cover, but I kind of forgot about it actually. Uh, my bad. But the college administration scandal, which... It's still going on. I mean, it isn't being, forget me, it's not being, um, it's not being, I guess, on the forefront of news these days, considering how much stuff has happened in the last 48 hours. But this particular one, which I still find amazing, was that, um, well, actually, I'll tell you what, let me just play the tape and you guys can go from there. Good morning. Good morning. How serious are the charges these parents are facing? Very serious. We're dealing with mail fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit these crimes. And what you have here are two schemes. You have the cheating, that is the test taking or the paying for others to take the test, um, the scoring of the test. And then you have the one that's really complicated, which is showing that your children are athletes when mm. they're not, so that they get in, as they put it, through a side door. Mm. Since the kids didn't know about it, a lot of the kids, do they still get to stay in school? Well, it's an interesting question, Gail. I think the parents are facing serious time and perhaps when I mean by that is prison time. They could go to jail uh -huh. for this? We're jail? talking to parents. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that we should look away from that before I get to the children because the people are so angry yeah. all over the country yeah. about this case. Yeah. So the parents need to be punished severely in order for there to be deterrence. Now let's look at the kids. Some of the kids really didn't know, but you also have believed that some of the kids did know. And so are they going to be criminally prosecuted? Possibly, but highly unlikely. So what happens to them in college? If they're in college now, isn't the remedy with the college? Does the college expel them? How about the people who already got degrees? Does the college then dec decide to rescind those degrees? Wow. Yeah, and it, then it yeah. spins on to, um, uh, to employment, you know, because everything has been falsified since the yeah. beginning. Wow. These parents did their children no favors. Exactly. Ricky, college admissions is like when you're facing jail time. You throw money at a problem if you have a lot of problems. Couldn't somebody just lawyer up with a lot of fancy, expensive lawyers and get out of this? No one's getting out of this one, John. There's too much attention put to it. It's one thing to buy your way out of, or buy your way into education for your children, which I find appalling and disgusting, frankly. But it's another thing at this stage to just think you can buy a fancy lawyer and get out of this. These parents probably had no thought that at some point they would go to prison. What's the likelihood there are more William Singers out there? 
Well, there probably are more Williams singers out there. And think of the irony of going after the kingpin first and then going down. I find that fascinating. He's fa facing 65 years looking to try and bring it down through his cooperation. Mm -hmm. He says he's done this for 800 pounds. We are the iceberg uh, with 33. Oh, wow. my God. You think of all the students, though, that didn't get in, that should have gotten that's in what because I think their about. slot was taken. That's it's hard terrible. Yeah. It's so just terrible. Yeah. And that's what makes people angry at yeah. the elites and the wealthy. This yeah. is going to exacerbate that divide. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, Ricky. Thank you. Ricky. Thank you. Pretty much out of that whole lot, so pretty much out of that whole thing was, it, literally put, nobody's going to get out of this alive. Nobody. I mean, you would... If you think, out of all said and done, because parents who had money and opportunity paid for their children to get into colleges under false pretenses, um, number one, what truly does need to happen is the one thing nobody's saying. is just that if the parents did actually pay for their kids to get into college that they didn't earn on their own merits or they earned the false pretenses, then let's just go ahead and say it. They need to go, those colleges need to expel those students. And if they've graduated, the college needs to rescind those diplomas, rescind those degrees. That, that, be, that is the one, it's amazing when I said, well, what if the kids didn't know? Again, it's the, then at the, the thing, are we going to let the child, I mean, what is the, what is the lesson that's learned there? That if, let's say, okay, let's, let's, let's do a little, let's do a little, uh, Let's do a little make-believe, as Mr. Rogers would always say. Say I'm a parent that has multiple means and money. Let's say I decide to send my children off to college. But let's say I go the same route as these parents did and use a guy who knew a way to get me, to get my kids into a fancy-ass college that if as long as I paid him whatever he needed to be paid, and as long as they did whatever they told, as long as they were told what to do, then they got in, no questions asked. Okay, let's say, let's say, fast forward a few years, and I'm caught. I'm caught along with this douchebag who said that I wouldn't get caught. So that means now he's facing jail time, I'm facing jail time, and my children will ultimately suffer because usually in that situation, the university wants to save face. The university doesn't want to be a, a, a degree mill. Where basically, you know, people pay and don't really go to classes, get a degree, and it's almost like they've learned nothing. So, they don't want that. So, of course, universities are going to sit there and say, oh, no. So, we need to redo the way we do our admissions, and also we need to expel these students. We need to make an example. Now, you're probably wondering why they're taking so long to come up to this concept. Well, aside from the fact that most of these kids are white, um, actually all these kids are white, um, is one thing. And number two, their parents, again, have means. These are, and these, some of these people are famous Hollywood directors and actresses, which I find funny because everybody's everybody been riding the Lori Loughlin, you know, Aunt Becky from Full House. Everybody's been riding that train. It's been funny as hell. But keep in mind, they have means. They're going to sit there and argue, but nobody's going to come out of this. So nobody's going to come out of this uh, with a slap on the wrist. Oh, no. There will actually be jail time I'm assuming jail time and heavy penalty passed out to not only the person who the mastermind who's already, like I said, got 65 years for this, but the parents are going to be facing some sort of, I mean, mail, mail, and mail fraud and things of that nature. That's felonies. Those aren't misdemeanors. Those are actual felonies, which makes it a federal case. So that means that there will be some type of reprimand coming down the block. However, in the sense of the students, I'm going to just be dead honest. I mean, if you're the university, you're going to have to expel the students or rescind the degrees. Because that is the only way you can sit there and say that you're above board. If you let these kids slide, then you're pretty much saying we're not blaming the kid. But at the same time, we're still going to honor the work. Because, you know, in some twisted sense of morality, we can't take away from the child. But again, if it was, and I'll, and I'll throw this out there. If it was anybody else that wasn't white and did the same thing, oh, they would throw the child out and the child, child they would they would arrest the parents to the child out on their ass and if they did have a degree they'd rescind it. Tell me I'm wrong. But again, it's one of those things to where I just wish that um, they needed the universities need to just go ahead and go do that at this point. You need to go ahead and rescind those rescind the degrees of these individuals 
And unfortunately, they're not going to be too far off because their parents are rich. So again, it's not like they're going to be losing anything. But moving right along, I love the fact of what Senator Warren had said because to me, she made sense in this, and I have been saying this for years about the Electoral College, and I'm so glad that someone that she, someone at a town hall asked Elizabeth Warren this, and I loved her answer. Incarcerated, ensure online voter registration, and non-excuse early voting. All right. Great question, but can I go you one bigger? And that is, I believe we need a constitutional amendment that protects the right to vote for every American citizen and to make sure that vote gets counted. We need to put some muscle behind that. And we need to repeal every one of the voter suppression laws that is out there right now. And I'll tell you one more. We need to make sure that every vote counts. And, and I, I want to I push that right here in Mississippi, because I think this is an important point. You know, come a general election, presidential candidates don't come to places like Mississippi. Yeah. They also don't come to places like California and Massachusetts, right? Because we're not the battleground states. Well, my view is that every vote matters. And the way we can make that happen, <laughs> is that we can have national voting, and that means get rid of the electoral college. You have to love that for the simple fact of the matter is just that Elizabeth Warren sat there and said the one thing that needed to be said was the simple fact of the matter is the Electoral College does need to finally go. Now, for a lot of you guys who probably are wondering what the Electoral College is, that's basically the system that we always see on election night where, you know, when they're adding up the totals of votes uh, from each state for, for, a, uh, for a politician. And then once the votes are counted, you see delegates, as far as the delegate votes, um, get put towards said person. That's the Electoral College. Now, the Electoral College, for all those that don't know, is, to me, the most outdated system that we still have in the U.S. today, aside from a two-party system. But the Electoral College is basically every state has a set number of delegate votes. Now, depending on the majority of, uh, the majority, the majority of voting depends on where the delegate counts go. So, for example, look at your previous election. Um, if you looked at Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, and you looked at the South, and I'll just use my state of Tennessee, for example. State of Tennessee has, the state of Tennessee uh, de delegates, I think they have, uh, I want to say we have five, six plus, five or six delegate votes. Um, I'm almost certain of that. But, okay, so let's just say we have six. So, state of Tennessee has six delegate votes. Overwhelmingly so, because of the majority of voting and the idiots that we have in Tennessee, a lot of people voted for Trump. So therefore, the overall vote was for Trump, so six delegate votes went to Trump. In the same sense, like New York voted for Hillary and other states. Now, the catch-22 out of this is the delegate votes are based on population standards, uh, which means that if your state has a large population, nine times out of ten, you get more votes. Why California actually has 11, it explains this, why if you think about it, why California has 11, Texas may have 9, and you know, you have states like Georgia that might have 3. It's based on population. And I've always hated that, because it is amazing to me, like, like Elizabeth Warren says, every vote counts. So if every vote counts, then honestly we need to go by the popular vote. Because so many other countries, when they have their elections, go by popular votes. And a lot of people used to argue, when we talked about removing the electoral college, it's like, well, if, if we remove the popular vote, then that means anybody that wins California and California, New York, and another state, you automatically win the election. Okay, 
Um, and usually it's the part where I rub my head because you keep using the words popular vote. I don't think you know what it means. Because even if, even if you ran a popular vote on a U.S. election, you ran by popular vote alone, Winning California, winning New York, winning Florida, and all these other big states does not mean you automatically won. Because you still have 47 some odd states that still put in their votes. Those 47 some odd states can easily beat big three. What this actually does, which I wish one day it'll happen, because like I said, the population votes were based on a 1920s schematic, and this is why I say the Electoral College is outdated. Because it doesn't make things fair, because if you really think about it, it sets up the political circus for politicians to visit the so-called battleground states. And that is completely unfair to other states, because they don't have the same amount of electoral college votes as the battleground states do. And it just sets up this political machine that honestly needs to be deconstructed. So for so fact of the matter is I agree with Elizabeth Warren. The whole idea of electoral college needs to go. That felons, felons who are who are out of jail should be allowed to vote. That you know that election the election day should be a national holiday. That um, so many other things down the road. But think about that. If all those things were changed, like online voting, automatic registration. Um, I mean, we can keep going down the road because I mean, there, there's a lot of things they did in the H1R1 bill uh, that's that uh, the House of Representatives submitted. It's just waiting on uh, Turtle McConnell to actually bring it to a vote, which she thought it never will. But the whole idea is the Electoral College does need to be finally disbanded, and we need to move toward a popular vote. That's how you make every vote count, in my opinion. But moving right along, this one thing I did want to point out was. About the Dow drops 460 points, which is usually, uh, as I said before, a sign of the recession. Keep in mind the Dow dropped 460 points when we actually were up, when we actually were uh, in Bush 2.0 years. Um, because what actually happened then was this was before the, this was actually the signs of too big to fail, in which we had a recession just because um, you had. Pretty much the top 1% in corporations getting everything that they want. Nothing was going down to the rich. And at the same time, too big to fail was bullshit because a lot of things failed and we did fall to a recession. So again, it makes no So again, it's amazing to me how individuals themselves can turn around and sit there and, for lack of better words, uh, try to sit there and say, well, the economy is strong because look what, look what Agent Orange is doing. No. The stock market is tank. It's actually going, it actually, again, is going a bear market. For all those that don't know what that means, that means stock market is trending down. Um, bear down is how they got it. I don't know. I didn't come up with the instructions. on. I didn't come up with the innuences for the stock market. This is what they came up with. So in 460 points going straight down, that means the market is bearish, which means that it's not good because investors are being very shy about putting their money anywhere. So we really shouldn't be surprised about that. So again, you know, it says signs of recession, and I'm like, why is it that only recession and crashes only happen when there's a Republican president? Oh, that's right, because they don't believe in actually, um, for lack of better words, uh, for conservatives, they're always actually out of money, which I find interesting. But anywho, moving right along though, because uh, there's this one thing I said, like I said, going back to education, this one little thing bothered me um, when it comes to body shaming. And I did not know shit like this happened. I mean, not to this extreme. Like, uh, let me just show you, it'd be a lot better. There were three body shaming awards that were given out, and they were titled the Big Booby Struby Award for the girl with the biggest breast, the Big Biggest Booty Award for the girl with the biggest buttocks, and the String Bean Award for the skinniest girl.
I can't believe that not only would my old school district engage and allow this type of behavior, but that it was swept under the rug. The ACLU says the cheer awards are the latest instance that show a culture of sexual harassment within the district and their unwillingness to address it. They say some students have left practice crying and so ashamed because of their coaches' comments. I'm going to be so honest because <laughs> I looked at that and I sat there and I, I looked at it and I'm like, okay, so let me make sure I understand this correctly. You have cheerleader coaches out there at this some, some district that is literally just um, making fun of young girls and giving awards out like this for biggest butt and biggest, biggest breasts and all this shit. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out who are the parents that are sitting here, sitting there at these tables as these awards are being given out. I'm honestly trying. I am trying my hardest to sit there and go, how is it that you're a parent and you hear your child get up there and you hear, well, well, Jasmine got the biggest breast, the biggest booby award because she, every time she runs, I think she's going to give herself a concussion. Who the hell is talking about my child's breast? See, at this point, as a dad... Oh, oh, I'm knocking. Oh, I'm going to jail that night, just because you ain't finna. You are not be up. You're not. You're not about to be up there talking about my child. Not in that way. Oh, I. Oh, I would have been. Oh, that would have been. That would. It would have been. It would have been just terrible. But it's amazing to me that parents sat there, and you can see parents sitting there, and you hear a lot of them laughing, and I'm like, this is the problem with a lot of our society. It's just that you can't talk about you can't talk about we need to change the perspective of how of how boys and girls are viewed when you have this nature of uh, of just destructive nasty ass mis misogynistic behavior that a child's going through and it's amazing to me that the school district and the principal saw nothing wrong with it. And that's why I was thinking to myself, oh, if I was a parent and I was at that school district, it would not end well because I would not sit there and be one of those small ass parents that's sitting there hearing their daughters talking about, well, she's got the biggest butt. We all love her butt. No, what, you, what you're not going to do is talk about my child. I mean, you can say she's great at cheerleading. Okay, cool. The moment you start objectifying her body... Yeah, that that's where I have that's where different types of thoughts run through my head where I just feel like I gotta take everybody out. Everybody gotta die. <laughs> that's the way I I mean that's why I said that's why I said to myself as as a, as a parent, if someone if someone talked about my child in that sense or tried to hurt my child or, or object or body shame my child or objectify my child that way, I, <sighs> murderous intent is the only way I can actually explain what would be going through my head at that moment. Because I'm like, you hurt my child. That means you, you, you got to go. And that's why I think to myself as a parent, I would, I would be a protective parent, but I just wouldn't know how to, they would be asking me questions on why did, why did daddy go to jail for knocking out the coach? And then I got to leave it to their mom to explain it, which that's a lot of bail money, but that's neither here nor there. But moving right along, um, for all those that don't remember about General Motors, General Motors, um, along with the rest of the uh, automotive makers that we bailed out. Um, if you don't remember, a few months ago, had turned around and uh, sat there and pretty much, uh, well, shut down 15,000 jobs, but also gave themselves bonuses. But they didn't want to make people think they're completely heartless because they wanted to sit there and say, oh no, we have a heart, look at what we did.
Today, Today GM is marrying Barra with the message for America. General Motors is committed to supporting U.S. manufacturing. The CEO announcing a new electric vehicle, 400 jobs, and a $300 million investment for the Orion facility near Detroit. After a week of presidential pummeling for GM's decision to close the Lordstown, Ohio plant this month. Get that plant open or sell it to somebody and they'll open it. Are you being bullied by President Trump? No, not at all. I mean, I think, uh, you know, we're having conversations. I think it's always important to understand different people's perspectives. The Orion plant, dedicated by President Ronald Reagan, today builds three vehicles, including the all-electric Chevy Bolt. Originally, GM planned to build a new vehicle outside the U.S., but Barr so says because of the workforce here and the revised and NAFTA agreement, build, um, it will now be made in the U.S.A. Why didn't you move that new vehicle to Lordstown? We look at uh, where does it make sense because of the, the common base from an architecture perspective, and that made sense to build that vehicle here. Barra says she wants all the 1,400 Lordstown workers who used to build the Chevy Cruze to stay with GM, positioning GM for the future and not looking back. Ann Thompson, NBC News, Orion Township, Michigan. Now, for a lot of you guys that don't remember, um, I did post that, I did actually said about the podcast earlier, uh, about a while back, where it said about Lordstown because they actually were, uh, had a factory that was making the Chevy Cruze, which all 1,500 jobs were basically removed because the plant itself was, uh, was actually reducing because of GM's cuts. Now, what makes this interesting is where I sat there and said, where the, where the reporter kind of beat me to as far as the thinking goes. And the thinking of it is, well, why didn't you just move this entire line to Lords to Lordstown? You know, the same place where you remove 1,500 jobs, but now you're adding back 400 jobs at a different plant. Well, we looked at it, and, and I was like, here comes the bullshit. Because here's what they don't want to say. What they really want to say is just that when an automated, when an automated, mo when an automated, when an automaker moves its product, moves its actual inventory as far as where things are made, it's because they know that they're going to have to pay the rising costs to workers there. Give you, give me an explanation. Um, say like in my home state of Tennessee, in Chattanooga, there's a Volkswagen factory. Um, a Volkswagen factory in Chattanooga. Let's just say, you know, God forbid that they don't cut their jobs. They only cut the jobs because the rising costs in Chattanooga, which means that they have to pay they have to pay the workers more than what they're getting. So what do they do? They find another area to where there's very little, where it's more rural, where it's a smaller population, where job the job market and the income is slightly more affordable for the business, which means they're paying less. Hence why they went to Detroit. Why? Because Detroit is very GM friendly. They gave GM a shitload of bonuses and incentives for them to move to actually move the car line there. Lordstown did not. So therefore, when she's sitting there saying, "Well, we looked at all the options," what you really want, excuse me, what you really want to sit there and say is, "Well, we've looked at everything and we decided that we're going to save money and go somewhere else." Hence, the same reason why Amazon is being courted for their headquarters. For they're next to the headquarters. They were going to be in New York. New York was giving them everything with the family farm, but they weren't going to be producing the type of jobs that would sustain New Yorkers. And therefore, there was a lot of protests, and eventually Amazon pulled out. Next thing you know, Nashville's on the docket because they wanted Nashville to have the next headquarters because they would seem to be more prestigious. But again, when you're luring these corporations, a lot of these cities and what they'll do is throw money and incentives at these corporations to actually move their locations here. And is that fucked up? Yes, because in the end, the corporations are making more money while paying less to the workers. That's why they're able to cut jobs and move from different locations from time to time. It's almost like having your own casino that you can move on wheels. You'll never lose any money, but they pay you to stay there. It's, it's, it's an interesting system, I will say that, but that is the reason why GM and other automakers are literally doing those moves. Now, I can't say what about, I'm saying, you know, when it comes to drum motors, I'm not Dodge. Dodge has been very low-key about its about its operations. Volkswagen, Nissan, all those things, that have, and other makers of that nature. It just seems to this right. The only ones that seem to be in the public spotlight is really just either um, Ford or General Motors, which is always the ones that seem to be in trouble because, like I said a while back, 
We bail the automakers. We bail the automakers out of their issue. I just think as Americans, we should be able to walk into any dealership like General Motors or Chevrolet, point out the vehicle we want, and get it. No questions asked because we bailed your asses out. That's just my opinion. But also speaking in business, Papa John's has a new face. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Shaq is now the spokesperson for Papa John's. I cannot make this up. This is literally, I don't know if this is great, because if you guys remember from Papa John's, um, old boy had some questionable uh, questionable language he said on a conference call, which caused him to step down um, as a CEO for the board of directors, and eventually he was just getting paid by the company that he created. So Shaq has decided to basically be the spokesperson and join the board of directors. And at the same time, we'll be investing in uh, 10 different Papa John's franchises uh, in the Atlanta area. Now, for a lot of this, I think it's, I think, you know, Shaq to me, Shaq to me is honestly the best example of a guy who just, he might as well print his own money. I mean, keep in mind, he has multiple Starbucks, multiple chicken franchises, um, uh, endorsements because you know everybody used to make fun of him about the gold bond lotion those commercials things like that i laughed because they, they you you got paid to be stupid and with lotion and you got paid for it i'm not gonna knock you for that let's not forget the money that he made with the Orlando magic with the los angeles lakers with the boston celtics and cleveland cavaliers let's not also forget that he actually has multiple business ventures uh, and investments and at the same time, he's also on NBA as he's also on TNT as an NBA analyst uh, for NBA Tonight. The man literally makes money, and I can't knock him for that. So a lot of people are sitting there saying, "Well, I don't need Papa John's anymore because of uh, because of their CEO." Well, the CEO's gone now, and I like to think that at this point, Papa John's is, a, is, a, is in what they call a uh, they're trying to save PR. So it's almost in the same sense where, you know, when Gucci came out and had the blackface or terrible, uh, the blackfacing uh, wardrobe and, you know, Dapper Dan, one of the most premier designers in Harlem, called out the Gucci, the owner of Gucci from Italy. You know, that's some serious pull when you can call the CEO of a, of a company that literally sells $2,000, $3,000 handbags and they leave their home of Italy to come to New York to talk to you. That's some pull, in my opinion. But again, this could be that Papa John's is trying to save face. I mean, as far as Papa John's, their pizza was eh, it's okay. I mean, better than Domino's because you know Domino's likes to burn shit. But that's a whole other, that's a whole other uh, story. But um, but no, Shaq being the uh, Shaq being the head, uh, be the so-called spokesperson of Papa John's should be interesting. But if, as far as Shaq goes, Shaq right now is what you call financially stable. But I can't knock him for that. But uh, moving right along as far as the last couple of bits we'll talk about is basically this here, which to me is still amazing that this happened. I'll show you guys what I mean. Quitted a former police officer in the fatal shooting of an unarmed teen. The not guilty verdict sparking protests now. ABC's Kenneth Moten is in Washington with that story. Kenneth, good morning. Good morning, Witt. It was an emotional night in the Pittsburgh area. That jury of seven men and five women reached the verdict in just four hours after the one-week trial. Prosecutors say former East Pittsburgh police officer Michael Rosfeld acted as judge, jury, and executioner when he fired on Antoine Rose. But Rosfeld maintained the shooting was justified. Overnight, protests in the streets of Pittsburgh. Demonstrators furious. A jury finding former East Police officer Michael Rosfeld not guilty in the shooting death of unarmed black teen Antoine Rose. The 17 year old spotted on cell phone video last June running away when officer Rosfeld opened fire, striking Antoine three times. Antoine Rose was shot in his back. He was unarmed and he did not pose a threat to the officer or to the community. Antoine was a passenger in an unlicensed taxi police suspected of being involved in an earlier drive by shooting. Defense attorneys say this video shows Antoine and two other suspects cleaning up the vehicle before Rossfeld pulled them over. The ex-cop took the stand, telling the jury of 12, three of them black, that when Antoine and another team bolted, he believed he saw a gun. Rossfeld insisting he fired to protect himself and the community. This case had nothing to do with race. He's maintained from the beginning that he just 
was trying to do what he was supposed to do. Allegheny County's district attorney said in a statement, while I respectfully disagree with their verdict, it is the people of this commonwealth who decide guilty or not guilty, and they have spoken to this matter. Antoine's mother left the courthouse speechless. Her attorneys released a statement saying, make no mistake, there is nothing reasonable or appropriate about the manner Officer Rossville took Antoine's life, and we will unequivocally prove that in federal court. Antoine's family has filed a federal civil lawsuit against former Officer Rossfeld and East Pittsburgh. Now that the criminal case is over, the family's attorneys told us overnight, quote, now it's our turn. Wit. All right, Kenneth Moten reporting for us in our Washington bureau. Thank you. Oh, oh come on. Oh, there we go. So for a lot of people that don't know, um, that story was basically, like I said, it, it's, it, it seems to be the, the same old, I'm not saying same old as in same old, but it seems to be the same old formula that we always know. That, you know, an unarmed black dude, an unarmed black man running from the police and, you know, police shoot to kill. And of course, no weapon is found. The same thing that happened, the same thing that happened here in Nashville, because that's still going on with a guy, with a kid who was actually running from a cop. And you can see on the, and you can see on the camera he is running away from the officer, not running toward the officer. And the officer still shot him. That case still ongoing as he's been indicted on murder. Now, the we can keep going the same old story as far as as far as um, officers shooting black men because apparently they can bring in they can bring in armed Caucasians, but you can't bring in unarmed black men without killing them. So you would think just from the video alone would be enough to at least convict them, but I keep forgetting about it. And I, and I hate to say this, but I keep forgetting that, you know, I we can't depend on video. I mean, this is, and this is going to be something that is going to be hard to accept. And honestly, it's just gonna be, it, it might make me unpopular, but I'll go ahead and say it. We no longer can depend on video to sit there and show these cops, to show these cops' behavior toward black men. We can't. We can't depend on body cams because body cams will sit there and show that the officer acted inappropriately, but the officer will get a pass. We can't sit there and say, we can't sit there and say, well, we saw the team running away from the cop and he shot the, and the cop shot the team with his back turned to him, but somehow he's a threat. The video sit there and shows that you just shot him. You shot him and you weren't in any danger. Again, you somehow walk. And... It, it's it's this is why this is why I sit there and say I I couldn't be a parent I couldn't be a parent in this day and age because I would worry too much about my children especially if I had sons because let's just, I mean to be honest as a black man you're not gonna sit there and tell me that the thought of you leaving your house when you leave your house or leave for where you stay every every black dude has had this thought. I'm, I, am I going to make it back home today? Or if you see the police and the police see you, it's like, is this going? Is this it? I mean, every black dude thinks that. But I can imagine for me having a child, especially a son, and now I have to worry about where my son is most of the time? Or if my son's going to make it back home? Or if my son's going to do this? I can't imagine that, that level of just... I mean, uh, I, I couldn't. So now when I sit there and I see you know, the same story of another black man being gunned down and the officer, who is white, is going to turn around and sit there and say, well, I was in danger. And it's like, and it to me, I mean, yeah, they're trigger words. They are trigger words. You, you'll be honest. I was in danger. I feared for my life. I shot because I saw a gun. Not to mention a gun was not picked up. The gun was not picked up in that story by that kid. So again, you think, okay, he shot at a kid. No gun was found. The only thing he went off of was that the car was the car may have been used. Keep in mind, the car may have been used in a robbery. It was never confirmed as of yet. So he was just going off happenstance. The kid was running away and he shot him. And he shot to kill. And somehow, you know, in Philadelphia, they turned around and said the officer did nothing wrong. And this is the part where I'm gonna sit there and say this. And and again, this might make me unpopular, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. If a cop if a cop does get killed in these so-called states where a cop kills a black man and he walks off, it's going to be very difficult for me to feel very bad for them. Because, again, 
you had video of an officer shooting it on our man and the officer still walked. We said bodies, we said we needed body cameras. Body cameras don't work. We said we needed more police training. They turned that down. They said that we need they needed more lethal, more lethal, less lethal options. They turned that down. But the one thing that officers will never turn down is reaching for the gun when a black man is running. Because somehow a black man is a threat. But every other race you can kind of take down even if they're armed. Tell me I'm wrong on that. But then again, I know that, like I said, made it may be unpopular, but that's just the way I feel. Because honestly, from my mind, fuck the police. So, um, moving along on that. Um, also, another story which also made me mad. And this story is, again, the same. It, it's one of many, but it's just that when I hear it, it just it infuriates me so. This is a thing where you never give up on yourself. You always fight for your freedom. That you know, fight, no matter what. 36 years since he was 22 years old, Archie Williams has been locked up in Angola, convicted of rape, first degree murder, something he didn't do. It was an up and down, you know, road, but we didn't do it. So, how does this mistake happen? This was a wrongful conviction based on uh, technology and the processes that were in place then. During his trial in the early 80s, there was no physical evidence Williams was guilty, just a picture of him that looks similar to who assaulted the victim. Pointing at Archie's picture, that looks like him, but he's not the guy. Go find somebody who looks like that. Then, the creation of a national fingerprint program decades later, able to match fingerprints from the crime scene to a different man, not Williams, but deceased Stephen Forbes. Who was caught in the act um, just a couple years after this crime, um, committing another sexual assault. Williams finally exonerated. The sun shining down him. He can now laugh, talk, walk with his family again. It's been a What's long time like coming. Experiences have been robbed from these people. The thing I'm really missing is I'm not getting my little great. But astonishingly, Williams isn't angry. He can't be right now. This is what he's been waiting for for years. Freedom is of the mind, and it's all about how we review life. Yeah, it would never let me harbor hate. That is amazing. That, here's the thing. The man was... He was, of course, I'm sorry, let me start again. Let me start over again. So accused of rape 22, stayed in, you know, was jailed for 36 years. It wasn't up until the Innocence Project came back and actually fought for this man's case. Come to find out that, of course, he didn't do it at all. The person that actually did do it is dead already. So, again, it's, it's one of those things to where I sat there and I'm like, I literally did this. I did this when I was when I was reading the story, when I was watching the story and actually went back and researched it. 36 years. Think about that. 36 years. Over over a third, over more than a third of your life. In jail at 22, 36 years later, you release. And the one thing that, that I took away from that was when they said, how, I was like, I, I literally said, how are you not angry? 36 years of your life in the penitential system in Louisiana you're not angry. How? And I love the fact where he sat there and said something. He said he said freedom is of the mind. He said they can't. He said if they can't get you here, then they can't get you at all. And I love the simple fact of the matter. It's like I love that man's stature, but dude, if I were you, you better be suing that state for everything he's got. I mean, sorry, everything that state's got. Thank you, Trace. I would be mad as fuck. I would be mad as fuck. 36 years? 36 years of your life for something you didn't do. And, and, and don't get me wrong. Some guys have better mind, mental states than, than anything else. I get that. If it was me, woo, I, I, I just, I, man. But then again, happy the man, happy the man did get his due. But if I was him, dude, wrongfully convicted, turn around and sue that state for all it's got. You lost, thir you lost 36 years of your life. They need to pay it back in full, in my opinion.
But again, it's like it's it's, it's stories like that. Like I said, the previous story about shootings. Uh, you know, it's people always sit there and people always think. And, and Paul Mooney said it best. Everybody wants to be a nigga. Nobody want to be a nigga. Everybody loves the fact they they imitate everything about us, but they don't want us to get ahead. I mean, that was the whole point of what Paul Mooney was saying, and it's true. I mean, if you're if you're not a, if you're not a target by police, you're a commodity in the prison system, and that's just a million of that's just a tip of the iceberg of everything that's wrong with this really with this country when it comes to us. Because you know why? If a teen can get shot. From running away, if a black man can be wrongfully convicted and put in jail for forty years and nobody thinks about it, then that, that explains how this fool is still alive. Ethan Couch, remember, remember the the, the teen, the teen's defense where he got drunk, killed four people on the side of the road, and was and should have actually been in jail for the rest of his life, but was said that he suffers from affluenza, from having too much opportunity, money, and means. That was the defense they used. They used that defense for this cat. And of course, him and his mom took off to Mexico. They avoided they avoided uh, prosecution, only to be brought back to Fort Worth, Texas. Now you would think, okay, so drunk driving, vehicular homicide, um, ran, flight of justice, you know, obstruction of justice, and... To this day, and this week, um, he gets his ankle monitor removed, and he's no longer under house arrest. Are you sitting there telling me that, as a black man, I got to worry about being a target by cops? <coughs> Excuse me. If I'm a, if I'm convicted, I get the fast food line of of prison sentences. But this fucker here barely gets off house arrest after he killed four people. Amazingly enough, that's why I say there's a lot wrong with that situation. A lot wrong. And, again, it's one of those things where it just annoys me so. And when you say, Trey, it's too much opportunity to merge someone and get away. Yeah. Um, in so many words. But, that, but again, it's like you, you excuse the ignorant, but, you want, but when it comes to us, it's like, oh, throw the book at us, pretty much. But, Again, but well, the last thing I'm going to talk about, because like I said, we usually try to leave it on a good news segment, because we always talk about doom and gloom and everything else that's going on in the show, but we do try to leave it on a good note. And this good note actually made me feel great, because I know as I was speaking about the whole story about college, you know, white parents paying their kids to get into college, but let's be honest, no black parents doing that shit. And if they are doing that shit, they haven't reported them yet. But this one cat out here, which I loved his story, where he literally... A homeless cat. Oh, well, I lost it. Let me get it back. There we go. So, a homeless cat uh, named Dylan Chittick. This kid got accepted to 17 colleges. 17. And a lot of them are prestigious. Siena College, Keene University, Caldwell University, York College, Pennsylvania. He actually got accepted into Yale, Stanford, and I want to say John Hopkins, if memory serves me right. I actually went back to actually see if I could find all the colleges he's been accepted to. But he was literally homeless. His parent his mom struggling. Two brothers that had heart conditions that needed constant care. At the same time he was still working and going to school and still somehow scored a high ass SAT. Bruh <laughs> at, at, at that point, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm clapping. If you sit there, let me point this out. Your mom lost her your mom her mom, his mom lost her job and was, you know, doing day jobs. Two of two of the brothers had heart conditions, so they needed constant care. He he himself and the entire family were going from shelter to shelter trying to find a home. At the same time, he's still going to school and he's still and he's still studying. Where and he has a job where do you bruh? It's like you almost want to sit there and go, you almost you almost really want to go, where does he find the time? But again, I have to commend that. I have to commend that young brother. I mean, seventeen colleges, and no one had to pay for you to get in. No one had to. No one had to lie about what you are, dude. If, if there's anything, I will always say, hard work beats talent any day. I truly believe that. With every, I truly believe that with everything in me, hard work beats talent 
because talent doesn't always show up. Too many people rely on talent to get by. Hard work will always pay off. And I got to give that guy, uh, Dylan Chittick, I, it took me a while because I thought I thought I pronounced his name all the way wrong. Dylan Chittick, I, I give that man respect. And that made me feel good because college is not for everybody. This is true. College is for those who want it. We'll never knock that. At the same time, um, like I always said, best, if you don't want college, go to a trade school. There's plenty of opportunity in, in plumbing, electrician, construction, um, uh, being a machinist or a welder. There is plenty of lucrative jobs out there. College is not always the main route you got to go. And if you want to serve the armed forces, well, you can do that too. I wouldn't really recommend it, but if yeah, that's what you want to do. Um, what you say, Trace, talent gets wasted. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But the, but the thing about it is, though, is just like I said, got to give that guy, got to give that young man props because, you know, for somebody with that type of mindset, that's an unfuckwibble mindset. And that's what we kind of need, is, that's what we kind of need this day and age just to get by. But anyway, that's going to be the end of this, so we're going to go ahead and get to the shameless promotions. Um, as you can see down there in the comments, you see my other friend, Trace, um, he actually has a lot of shows himself. He actually has The Bump Down, which The Bump Down is a musical podcast, where he basically goes over chart work. He goes over what's how on the what's how on mainstream on the underground. And my boy finally got on the radio. Um which tells you that he is definitely that network of uh, that network of DJ King anyway is growing. Trace, help me out here as far as telling them the actual radio station to where they can listen in and the times when you got when you go on live because uh, I kind of forgot it. So if you don't mind letting them know about it, he also aside from the bump down, which actually is a it's a weekly episodic episode. He actually has a smoke of truth where basically is an unorthodox in your face. Um, pretty much leave your check your ego at the door mentality. Which means that you're going. Which means that he is going to speak, and it's not. And if it's truth, and like I said, all truth is like medicine. It is not designed to taste good, but it is designed to make you feel better. And if you're willing to face the truth, you're willing to face the smoke of truth. Which also, which trace. Um, also, people know when you're doing smoke of truth as well, so that way you got that way you got it going down. And also, um, my other friend, Vaughn, who uh, also uh, found my uh, husband on Facebook, has several podcasts of his own. He has to get the I Get That Reference VST, which is a short podcast where he goes over just various music and videos, things that you might find interesting, interactive show. He also has Rhythm Dance, where you can reminisce over the rhythm, in which he takes albums to a four-tier rating system and actually goes by that. You wonder what the four-tier rating system is? You have to watch Rhythm Dance to find out. He also has Random as Fuck with Uncle VZ, where it is the... I like to call it the society as if a pool was a pool of ratchetness and you stick your toe in it just to get a little escape for entertainment. All interactive shows. Um, also, my other friend uh, who's actually at a con right now, uh, we call him the Mountain Puncher, uh, Thomas Reed, actually has To Be Determined podcast, which is a fitness podcast. This man is all about fitness. He is all about the whole idea of um making sure that he is for the betterment of, uh, you know, doing workouts, nutrition, things of that nature. If I could show you the before pictures of what he looked like and what he is now, you probably wouldn't believe it. But again, to be determined where the results depend upon you every Saturday, um, except this Saturday, just because he's at a con. So he'll probably be doing a special on-site uh, to be determined podcast from there um, sometime today. And also with my shows, um, I do, of course, with How the Friend We Got Here is every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. And also the uh, Off Limits podcast, where nothing is off limits, will be later today from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, but all of our shows can be found in the I Get That Reference Facebook group. What is I Get That Reference? Uh, that is a place where it is open to all, whether you're blurred or not. The only thing when you ask that you participate, which means you're liking, sharing, and you're talking, basically being social. Let me not also forget the group, The Bump Down, which is also another group that you can also join, where we also encourage other people, like I said, to be social. And if, like I said, uh, also, ooh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Trace. Also, Trace does, uh, if you do are doing music, uh, and you want music to be heard on The Bump Down, or the group or the Facebook group to bump down. Uh, Trace, could you let them know exactly what format that the music should be in? Um, I, I did say MP4. I'm not sure if you accept different formats. So if you'd be so kind in the comment section to let them know what formats you'll accept, that way it'd be a lot clearer on the that'll be a lot clearer on your show. Um, but aside from that, like I said, with the groups are Facebook groups of the bump down and I get that reference. Um, also just interactive places. Also, we do have YouTube pages as well. So if you look up the bump down, if you look up, uh, how the frack we got here, if you look up off limits, if you look up, I get that reference, 
All of those are live YouTube video, uh, YouTube pages to where you can like, share, and subscribe. And we try to keep up to date as far as um, as far as shows they go themselves. Um, now, aside from that, uh, like I said, I hope to have a hope to have a full house here for Off Limits tonight. Um, I have to check to see if they're all to see if my all my folks are still coming. But I'm looking forward to that because with Off Limits, we do tend to go off the reservation, which I love to do because that's where great conversations lie. But with that being said, let me also end how the fact we got here. What I always say with the whole thing of how a fact is to stay informed. Staying informed basic stay informed basically means that um, we are trying to institute a level of not taking everything at face value, really going out there doing your own research, and then coming back and showing people what you have found to encourage them to do the same thing. Because an informed community can make a lot of better decisions than an uninformed one. Because an uninformed one got us Trump. So thank you guys for all who are watching this. And we did kind of jump up in viewers, like up and down. Really appreciate that and hope you guys do enjoy it. If there's stories out there that you think that are worth talking about or just things that you want me to talk about, just feel free to reach out to me on Facebook if they're either here or on YouTube. Doesn't matter. Aside from that, guys, hope you have a wonderful weekend and stay informed. Peace.